This Asian American guy is wondering why he's only matching with fob women on the dating apps, even though he's Americanized himself. So what is he doing wrong or what is he doing right? I perceive myself to be as American as apple pie, so I'd sure appreciate my counterpart. We got to talk about this Reddit post. He says, I'm a 28-year-old male. I'm based in the U.S. I'm Chinese American, but I'm only matching with Chinese girls on dating apps. Tinder, Hinge, Bumble do not work for me. CMB does pretty good, but exclusively women from China, not Asian Americans. I feel pretty Asian American myself, and I feel like this is the way it is in the Bay Area as well as NYC. White males, they took all the Asian Asian American females and then Asian American females, we're dating fob women. What's going on here, guys? Listen, this is not the first time this topic has been brought up on the internet. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. How many times are we going to talk about it? But you, you know why we have to keep talking about it every time it comes up? Because there's new perspective every time and things are always changing. And it's just talking about this from a different angle. Right, right, right. So hopefully uh, we say some things that can help this young gentleman out or help other people who are in this situation. First of all, right off the bat, you're getting matches. Not the worst thing. Lots of guys out there are struggling just to get matches. And I'm sure a lot of these fob women or immigrant women or international students, whatever you'd like to call them, uh, are probably not bad looking either. But right. they probably have a certain vibe. So let's go down the list of eight things that this guy probably needs to understand about his situation when he's thinking about, why do I only match with fob girls? Um, real quick, I got to reference this book from Lois Lerng, Andrew, or Lo, uh, his name is Louis Lerng. Uh, it says Asians don't date is the name of the book. Th this is the breakdown of the book. He says, Rita Gao and Kai Chung are at a crossroads. As Asian Americans, they've dated in their social engineered lane. Kai only dates Asian women from Asia. Rita only dates white men. This is literally an entire book about social engineering. So I guess what I'm saying is, is this guy falling victim to social engineering? And I guess, is he asking, how can I break the social engineering of American society? Yeah, listen, we all understand what he's going through. I think we've all experienced some version of it, but I think that there's a lot of things this guy needs to remember, man. All right, point number one, Andrew. I think he needs to remember that the lines are getting way more blurry in 2024 between what is a fob and an Asian American, both for guys and girls. Yeah, listen, there's a lot of people out there, especially if he's in one of the big cities, of a lot of women who are born in China, but they don't like appear to be that typical fob. Like they're very Americanized. They might probably speak the language more fluently. They might have certain, they might have a little bit of a little bit more traditional side or being more tapped in. Maybe they use their WeChat more than a Chinese American girl would. But a lot of these girls who are born in China and came here at the age of like eight or even 14 can be pretty Americanized. Not only that, I think there's a lot more, there's a, a lot more proliferation of English based schools in China, whether it, it used to be only like Shanghai American school would teach English. Now you could grow up in like 50 different high schools in Shanghai that are teaching right. in English with like I, uh, American school teachers. I feel like when he's saying fob though, first of all, he's probably referring to kind of like girls like this or who, you know, take like the traditional Han Fu photo or they're like in Central Park and they're doing like the washed out filter thing. Like, obviously we understand. Listen, fob girls, they love using the filters a lot more. Are you talking about like the cherry blossom photos? He's talking about the 10 out of 10 maxed out I guess, stereotype, right? Sure, sure, sure. But I think that it's a lot more blurry now for guys and girls. Like, listen, they are they got the internet. Just like we got the internet, we could see what's going on over there. They could see what's going on over here. Uh, they just might have a VPN. Uh, point number two, he might not fit a clear subculture of America, which would put him in the Asian American lane or Americanized lane. Andrew, explain this one. So this is what I'm saying is, I don't know what this guy looks like. I don't know what his profile said. He didn't really provide a lot of details. He just said, hey, I feel Asian American. That's fine that you feel Asian American, bro. I believe you. But how you appear on the apps, it may not be sending that message. And I don't know where you're at exactly. Does he say which city? I think he's in the Bay Area. All right, the Bay Area could be a little bit different of a situation, but if you were in New York or LA, believe me, if you were to fit into one of those Asian American looks, and there's a lot of different styles. I don't want to just only say that it's the Kevin Wynn or the white Sperry Top Cider 
finance, the, Asian bro chat. Right, you're saying I'm talking the, about the, there's also like your tech kind of athleisure gym bro. There's also your streetwear Asian guy, you know, wearing Ame Leon Dor. And then you also have your K-pop max, like J-pop max guy uh, who's playing into the anime kind of swifty hair type lane. And I'm just saying clearly in his profile, he doesn't fit into any one of these. And he clearly does not fit into some of the American subjects. Right, you're saying, saying he may be wearing some of the more nondescript pieces from H&M. He might be wearing Gap, which is almost like such a bland, neutral style. You almost, you almost can't categorize dressing from Gap as a style. Also, let's be honest, he's probably not very buff because if you were buff and showing off your muscles, that would come off as more American. That is a more American culture to beef up. That's what it is, right? Uh, it's not super right. Asian to do that, to be buff. So You're saying he might have buff. the neutral pack. He might not have a, he not, might not be juxtaposed with a subculture layer on top of the neutral layer. Yeah, just because you feel American on the inside, it does not mean that you appear Perception wise, uh, what are some of quick traits that would put him in the American lane? Whether these are what accessories or haircuts? Uh, I mean, you would uh, ditch the black rim square glasses that are typically Fabi. I don't know if he has those. Um, you got to wear some logo clothes. Yes, I know that you probably are comfortable in your own skin, but at some point you have to pick a style and you have to pick some of the styles that we had mentioned before. Um, your haircut, you right. know, probably try getting the fade on the side. You can't just only get, you know, $12 haircuts that look like it was cut by an immigrant. You can't just look like a stock photo image, yeah. right? And again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with matching with fob women, but if you don't want to match with fob women, then you have to be doing other activities in your profile that are not, that are more American and are edgy maybe. Right. Or things that are just valued in America, like whether you were raised by your parents to do that or not, it's almost like something that you're just going to have to do. Like right? if you got a picture of you being the quarterback for your flag football team, try, that screams American to me. That's true. Uh, it depends on obviously what type of Asian American girl you're trying to date. Uh, ABGs, they may or may not care about being a flag football quarterback, but it depends. It, like some people just want a girl who's just English is her first language. No, but I, you just but the girl just needs to feel like you're American. It doesn't really even matter the sport. She just need, you need to be doing something American. Right. Um, point number three, Andrew. CMB has a lot more Asians born in Asia because it focuses on serious daters and serious relationships. Yeah, so he mentioned that he's getting a lot more matches on Coffee Meets Bagel, uh, but he says, ah, they seem to be exclusively from China, which there's nothing wrong with. Like I said, I think a lot of those women are great, but... Also, you your profile clearly it comes off that you're Chinese as well. It's very clear that you're Chinese in your profile. Well, well it also has to do with the user base of an app because different apps have different like uh, population pools that they're yeah. essentially like targeting or yeah. marketing yeah. to. But, but there's nothing wrong with women who want more of a relationship, you know. But of course, listen, if this dude is the more like, yeah, I want to play around and date around a lot of American women. Well, then you got some work to do, bro. That's what I would say. Yeah, you can't be an NPC stock photo. Obviously, you're not an NPC, but it's like if you're coming across that way, that's the emotional feeling that you're eliciting from people. Um, point number four, Andrew. This is an interesting point you wrote. Asian women in America tend to prefer men that are at least a little bit more American than them. Well, please explain this point because I actually agree with you, and this is a very interesting point, and it's very almost difficult to talk about. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of what he said in his post, but it's general knowledge that like a woman in America, you know, if they're living in America, they probably want to date someone who's a little bit more Americanized than them. A lot of Chinese girls don't have to date somebody who is just as Chinese as them because, you know, if they're living in the West, they want to maybe feel like their man can bring them some type of access. I'm not saying this is every girl, but I feel like that this is most, at least 50% of Asian But I just thought women. they liked them because they're white. No, I but mean, is it because so you? I mean, by the way, they could just like them also because they're, they're, you're talking about Asian American yeah, women. Asian American girls going with white guys. It's like the white guy is going to be a more American than an Asian American girl. Yeah, and then obviously the Asian American guy to the fob girl is going to seem more American. So now you are the American guy. Obviously, there's still some fob women who date white guys. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We're not, you know, I don't know the, all the statistics, but what I'm saying is that. It's okay that you are the American boy to her. 
There's nothing wrong with that. You're right, American. Like that Estelle song. I just think this guy doesn't have an appreciation for fob women, or maybe the fob women he's matching with aren't that attractive. I guarantee right. you, man, all you need is that one attractive fob woman, that you, you, then you're cool with I, I will say it is weird to not appreciate fob women and then you yourself has a very bland, neutral look where you don't look like you're juxtaposed with an American subculture because that's like a, just a not a good equation with like a uh, good probability. Yeah, like I have out. to be honest, like when I dated a very, very fob woman and we were doing YouTube, it's like because our whole career was based in America in English still, it's not like I w didn't feel it did feel somewhat of a culture shock to be kind of sucked into a fob world, like the immigrant Chinese world that I was in right. when I was hanging out with her and her friends. So she was, she was nice though. And she, you know, she was learning English and she was good looking, but it was a culture shock for me because I just operate in the American side of things. You know what I mean? Right, right. So you kind of have to know how do you operate? If you don't want to take constant yeah, trips back to yeah. Taiwan or China, then, then it, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's not just you as a person. It's almost like the spaces or the third spaces and the vacations you take. Um, obviously, hyper-Americanized Asian girls, typically with white guys, but not all the time. They want to live life more like a White Claw or a Bud Light commercial that would air during the Super Bowl. That's like more what their image is. And um, ABGs, they might like a darker EDC Coachella, but more EDC sort of uh, vibe and aesthetic. Uh, point number five, Andrew, fob Asian women generally just appreciate Asian men more in general. Yeah. Yeah. I Pretty mean, I clear. Think, yeah. Listen, I think you clearly in your profile, I haven't seen your profile, but you probably appear to be a pro-Asian culture person. And, actually, and it I comes think, off clearly. And I think the big thing too is that like, and it's good and it's just different than America is like, I think fob girls really appreciate a good nerd guy with like a good job and a good salary. Whereas being a nerd in America, and you can blame it on the degenerate, downward assimilating culture, whatever, whatever. I think those are all valid discussions to have. Being a uh, viewed as a nerd in America is almost like a death sentence socially. Mm. It's crazy how that is. Um, but yeah, like people are a lot more like hybrided nowadays. You know, there used to only be Priuses now. 20% of all new cars are hybrid. So it just goes to show you uh, the lines are getting blurry between uh, cultural subgenres. Point number six, Andrew, if you've got photos eating sushi, hot pot, KBBQ, expensive Thai restaurants, hyper artsy designed art cafes, it's just more appealing to the fob life. Yep. Yep. I mean, again, this is like, you got to show some American edge basically in your photos. It doesn't mean you got to have like a biker jacket and a Harley Davidson. I mean, like what image are you trying to portray then? I'm not saying you have to get tattoos, but it's like, dude, you have for to me, under I wanted to get the American girl. So I got this MAGA hat. It's the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. If you were a fob dude and you wore a MAGA hat in a <laughs> dating profile, you might match with some curious uh, conservative women. But anyways, <laughs> like white um, women, yeah. yeah, it's possible. Uh, <laughs> they'd, they'd be like, yeah, well, he's on our side. Um, if you look nerdy in your face and style, okay, and you are doing nerdy things in your profile, you are going to come off as an Asian nerd. And right, you're referring more, to what? When you're saying nerdy things, are you talking about table tennis, ultimate frisbee? What are you, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, like those are things that there's not, those aren't bad to do, but it, those are nerdy things. Like, you know, so I'm saying if you're double doubling down on the nerdy thing, that's rough. Like you're putting yourself in a tough position. Like you might as well look cooler so that you can capture a larger net and then choose from there. But I just want my counterpart to accept me for who I am. Here's the truth. And this is a little bit. Shut up. Yeah, 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 here's a little bit of an aside. And I think that this is the part that's very difficult to swallow. It's like, it's so much easier for Asian American women to become Americanized than Asian American guys. Sure. So it's yeah. like if being Americanized is a currency or a metric that a lot of people are being judged on, but it's way easier for one sibling, even in a family to like achieve that. That's why you get like such different outcomes, mm -hmm. even people who theoretically raise the same. One's a guy, one's a girl. Um, point number seven, some guys compare liking fob girls versus liking Asian American girls as whether you prefer authentic Chinese food like Din Tai Fung versus liking Panda Express. All right, guys. Are the Asian yeah, American on, on, girls on, on. Panda Express and are the authentic fob girls Din Tai Fung? What? Dude, those are two different price points. Din Tai Fung and no, it's a, Panda it's Express. A, it's these a are funny class comparison. differences. It's a these funny are, comparison. These are class differences, man. If you can date a Din Tai Fung, go date the Din Tai Fung. But I would say... Is that like know, Kang Kang Food Court versus Panda Express? Oh, Is that man. more like... No. I mean, 
what would you say a better comparison is? Because you got you to compare price points right, when it comes right, to you restaurants. Gotta go I would say Din Tai Fung, by the way, that's like a pretty good fob chick if you can get a Din Tai Fung of a fob chick, which is, is authentic, though. I would say maybe is that more comparable to a, like a, a Hakkasan or a, like a Wagamama's or like a Nobu? I am no, I'm trying, you know, like you said, you got to, you got to look at the price points in comparison to each other. And I just think that it's difficult because I think that one thing that could help a lot of Asian American guys is like, if you categorize yourself as a restaurant or a car and you categorize the girl that you're chasing as a restaurant or a car, what restaurant would she be? Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, if I'm not the guy version of a Hakkasan, why am I chasing this girl Hakkasan? You're kind of talking about, like, using this analogy to help think through things. Because when it comes to what restaurant you like to eat at, it's a lot of your taste, your preference, where you feel comfortable. Do you like the decor? Do you like the vibe, right? These are all words that you still use for dating, oh, do I like the vibe? Do I like the, is it appealing? Yeah. Is it visually appealing? Is, uh, do, do the dates with this girl cost too much, right? These are all factors you take into consideration. So I guess I can see why, David, you would bring this up and say, hey, you know what? If I'm a restaurant, David, what, well, what, what restaurant would you be? Just throw out some names. It doesn't have to be exact, oh, perfectly perfect. Oh, my goodness, man. What, I would what do like you to see myself you are? as an Ipuro. Okay, so something like, from Asia that still had success in the West that that Western people like. I'm but probably, is Ipudo from Japan or is Ipudo from, from Japan? Or Ichiro? What about Okaboro? You're like because that's more authentic, but it's still made in America technically. Yeah, I mean you'd have to say that's more like it. Yeah, I mean everybody would want to be like a Din Tai Fung or, yeah, a, or a Jong Ro or a Kangadong, you know, like something that was like from Asia but still liked in America, but. I don't know. That's I'm just saying. What? Well, yeah. What? What restaurant would you realistically want to be if you could be? I think the reason why cars and restaurants are such a good comparison is because it's non-emotional. There's literally like 500 to like 5,000 restaurants to choose from, five different thousand models of cars to choose from, and there's actually and they're tiered in a price classes and like two door sedan, four door sedan, compact SUV and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, you guys get what I'm saying. It's just a more and less emotional way to. Look at categorization. Point number eight, Andrew. I found that Canadian Asian girls are more comfortable being fobby and being Western and embracing both sides at the same time. Mm. It seems like they explain, David. Basically, they explain have Canadian your love Asian girls. For Canadian girls. Canadian Asian girls, especially if they're from Vancouver, Toronto, maybe Montreal, Calgary, a little bit less, but basically from Mont Vancouver or the Toronto area, they have less self hate. Like they might like Western culture and study Western culture and listen to like some, I don't know, Bryson Tiller B-side cuts, some, you know, deep cut Bryson Tiller, and then also still be really proud of their parents' culture or their grandparents' culture. Mm. Whereas in America, I see it's like either one or the other. It's like girls are going to be into some deep cut American subculture and then just like disavow or they'll just like maybe if they're raised in the Midwest, they're just reject it all and they go more and listen to Jay Chow every day. Mm. You're not going to see somebody like do both. But I see Canadian girls do both more. I think it's even, um, I see Korean girls, even Korean American girls, they tend to be like really into American culture but really into Korean culture. It's just like Chinese girls a little bit less. I think there's more hard choices forced there due to maybe some displeasure with you know insecurity or something i think you're onto something david listen guys. david's looking for a canadian girl but anyways my uh before we get into the comment section and kind of wrap up this video my 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 suggestion to this guy this op this 28 year old who's apparently not satisfied in his mind with his match with his fob matches i would say Fix up your style, fix up your profile, and start swiping in different cities yeah. and see what happens. You got to know the environment does matter. I don't know if you're in the Bay Area. I'm not going to speak for the Bay Area, especially if you're in SF proper. I just know that's not a great dating pool. You know what I feel bad about for this guy is he, he's 28, so that's the youngest millennial you can possibly be according to actual like age charts or whatever. And I'm saying that he's almost like thinking like somebody who's like 38 or 48, but he's 28, where somebody, if he, he was 24, he wouldn't even be thinking like this. He'd have better IQ coaching. Um, somebody just said, man, I feel like any girls that's not from the U S is almost an upgrade compared to Asian American girls. And somebody else came in and said, I want an Asian girl from a Latin country, or you could find an Asian leaning Latina too. But yeah, it's true. Obviously an Asian girl that's raised in Latin America, where there's, which there's not a lot of, but there is some from Argentina and 
Puerto Rico and you know different places or whatever you know the, the Chino Latino experience she is gonna be like a hybrid of personalities more than likely if she's from like Costa Rica her parents own supermarkets or whatever um people are just saying man I just am so sick of dating apps in general and uh a lot of people are just talking about man Nobody is getting married on anything except CMB. So shout out to CMB. And someone said, your current profile sets you up to match with a certain type of woman. If you desire a different type of woman, change your setup of your profile. That's the easiest thing to say. Yeah, that's the easiest. Uh, somebody said, don't date fob girls. They just want a green card. All right, I think that this is a really outdated stereotype. Yeah, I don't think that's true anymore. Uh, I think it's like a lot less true. I'm not saying it's 0% true, but it's a lot less true than it used to be. This is the last point. Somebody said... I noticed that online dating just amplifies macro trends that you see in real life in society. So try to find the app that hopefully includes you in that trend that you can capitalize on. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really interesting point. Do you think that online apps just like make people even less nuanced than in real life dating? Like, like if somebody wants something, they tend to chase that thing to a 10 out of 10 level, whereas in real life, that's just not how real life works. Sure, I can yeah, see that. Yeah, I think so. I think ultimately, the biggest thing is, and, and I think this is a good segue to my final takeaway. If you're a guy, you got to try to be able to fit into a trend. And I know that that's what, not what a lot of guys want to hear because it feels like it's, it's against what their parents taught them about being a up, you know, righteous Confucius Confucian person, especially if they're more from an academic family background, but it's like, I don't know, from what I've seen, that is the best functional advice, but it obviously it it's, depends on you whether you're willing to incorporate it and execute upon it. All right, everybody, uh, let us know what you guys think about this. Have you ever uh, encountered this problem or if you are a fob girl or an Im uh, immigrant Asian girl, how do you feel about this? Uh, did what we say kind of check out? Does it all make sense? Anyways, I, I like fob women. Yeah. I mean, I just think that Asian American guys should not view them as any less. I agree 100%. I we I, between us we've yeah, we've both dated uh fob women and had good relationships with them and it's been good. You know, I I do think it comes with cultural trade-offs. So if you're a super American dude, it'll be a different experience. That's fine, but you just have to know what you're getting into. But there's nothing wrong with dude. Do you see these Shao Hong Shu girls? Woo! Dude, Jeez. and you can learn stuff too. One time you can I dated date the Dintai Fung. Get dude, out of here. One time I dated this Japanese girl, and she was like warming up all these hot towels in the microwave, always to like you know, because you know Japanese they really like hot towels in their face. So I was like, man, I'm gonna incorporate that. I'm gonna learn something from it. Become more Asian myself. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree, disagree with this? Obviously, it ultimately depends on what you want to achieve and what is your uh, capacity to achieve that thing. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.